I wish I could get this thing cool, but it's just not cool. But I'm thirsty. Oh. Like that. I feel pretty bad when the whole back of that bed is perfectly clean. And then it's just one monster can. Barstow, it's Friday, it's 11. We got a route. <laughs> it's been a busy week. Um, that truck's been like a learning lesson as far as taking something and doing major modifications to it and then, you know, getting it prepared to bring out to the desert and not just like, oh, it's a roller or oh, this is done or oh, the sheet metal's done or whatever. You know, it's a, it's a growing uh, pain or just a step to figure out like time management and proper planning to get a vehicle ready and prepped to go test in the desert instead of just have a customer pick up. So we initially planned for Wednesday. Sean and I busted our asses for several days before that. And then, you know, I caught myself at the early hours, Wednesday morning, working from Tuesday. Uh, and I just called it and had to text Keith and text Eric and uh, apologize and just say that, you know, I, it, it's not a good idea to go on Wednesday and, um, you know, the truck's not ready and I don't want to rush something. I don't want us to be up all night and then go out to the desert and just be smoked and not have energy and just not be 100% and have the truck not be 100%. We had no systems testing. We, know, we didn't have any daylight to actually go drive it and drive it locally at the shop and, excuse me and it just didn't pan out so it was a it was a big lesson and they say the only mistake is one what you don't learn from and um, you know that's just those are tools to to do different next time so we're here today it's Friday um, Keith is out here Eric's out here Joey's out here uh, Sean's out here a fabricator and um, we have the truck we tested it all day yesterday we made it nice prepped it went through everything um, new third member new bearings, hubs cleaned out, all the rear axle kind of freshened, AJ did it from Evan Weller. And then the new trailing arms complete and on the truck, um, re-sprung, shocks revalved, dual spares, uh, new hard lines for the cooler, different ride height, uh, drive shaft came off and got balanced, um, and a couple other little things. So we've taken it out, Keith and I took it out three times and uh, he's making revisions now. The issue is just not having enough weight in the back. It's a mid fuel cell kind of setup. So the fuel cell is actually behind, we can go check it out. The fuel cell is actually behind the cab and not in the very rear of the chassis. So it, it's just ideal to have the weight um, all the way towards the rear. So we added a third tire just to get some kind of ballast. Uh, for the back and then we're gonna make a couple more adjustments to the shocks. Eric's been hanging tight. He hasn't been in the truck yet. Keith wants to try to get it 
as good as it can get before he gets in it. Uh, so that's what we're doing right now. The bypasses have been off once today. We, right when we got here, we changed the front springs and then the bypasses have been off once and revalved. Uh, what are you doing right now? Nitrogen? Nitrogen. That's key. Say hi. hi. <laughs> uh, we're just trying to make the thing work good. So it's hot. It's, we got breeze right now, which is way better. It was like really stagnant, uh, but you know, Right now it feels okay. If you want to look at the stuff, we can kind of go over what's there. Previous uh, update on this, I kind of showed all like the outriggers for the dual spares. It had just kind of an open trunk space back here that had two paddle tires that would fit in there because they're a smaller diameter. Just to try to get some weight back there. And we wanted to finalize doing two full size spares in the back. Uh, this needed a revision, it was a little beat up. I made a trim panel that's freshly powdered that's over there, it's not on. Um, and then obviously the biggest chunk of work is the trailing arms. So I still had to do like a standardized plate on tube trailing arm just because they're so close to the frame that you couldn't really do a canoe style link. Um, just had to kind of keep the the design constrained to what was already there for the packaging. So all we did is just adjust where the shocks were in relation to um, where they where they're at on the link. So we kicked them back and then lowered their whole location on the trailing arm, and and that got us the up travel that we wanted. So now it's a little under 14 inches of up travel at ride height versus the six that it had before. Uh, I think that was due to like upgrading the shock package and then notched the frame, added four inch bump stops instead of two inch bump stops, and uh, new limit strap tabs, and just made sure everything worked. So this is our test day, and then everything will kind of get taken apart, re and then powder coated arms, and just cleaned up for Pismo next weekend. Keith Marigold, KDM Shock Technologies. Um, Keith is local to myself and he's one of the best. Uh, I, I just, peep, you know, I think a lot of people here are going out testing and, and, oh, I need to get, you know, my shocks tuned. And I just, if you could sum up why that's so important and what difference that makes, that's what I want to express. Like, what, what's well, the difference? Just every that? vehicle's different. All the shocks are always different. They just come set up off the shelf with their base tune and you gotta find what the truck wants with springs and valving yeah. to really make it happy. Yeah. And just uh, fine tune it from there and like we've been doing today, just seeing what the truck wants, make some changes, add some weight, add some valving, um, and just really, really fine tune it and make the best it, it can be really. Yeah. That's what's most important is like, you build a race engine and don't tune it. Yeah. You're never gonna get it's full potential. Sure, sure. Same thing with a, same thing with a truck, or any anything. Yeah. You wanna you wanna make it the best you can. Yeah, and I, f I feel like over the years too that the shock tuning thing has been taken more serious. Mm -hmm. I don't think it used to be. Like no, I said, with my old truck, I didn't ever tune it. Yeah. I was like, ah, I'd, I'd like turn and bypass tube myself, and that's it. Still had nothing to go off of. Yeah, like, yeah. Just, we're like, okay, it's good enough. Yeah. And I think that the seriousness and the importance of it has changed definitely over the last couple of years. Yeah. So it's uh, Eric's truck obviously got major modifications done, you know, to the ride height and the up travel and mm -hmm. you did. So you took the shocks when we had the truck at the shop, Keith took the shocks and you went through them yeah. initially. Yeah. So w did you take them apart and then look at what they had and just got an idea of. Yeah. From where it was at, uh, everything got changed. Um, it was just so far off before that everything had to get redone. Yeah. And with the springs being so far off from where they were, it was hard to get accurate calculations with the with the 
with the springs. So um, just, yeah, did the best I could and got our starting point so we can just tweak it from there. Sure. And now since the truck's together and we know where it stands, now it's where the big improvements come from. Yeah. And the other thing that Keith stresses all the time is the weight situation yeah. behind the axle. You need to have correct weight percentage to really get the rear planted and make it uh, work the best it can and not be skatey and just, yeah, it's super important. Yeah. Like you could have a rear cell truck or a, a mid cell truck and yeah. still have correct weight percentage and have it work well. Yeah. But ideally the fuel cell needs to be behind the axle, but in this case, we just make the best we can. Yeah, and Eric and I talked to you about possibly just either running a secondary cell or taking that out and just run it to the rear. Yeah. Be done. That would be ideal. You know? and, and then I think the radiator is going to get better cooling too. Yep. Just because that, that big chunk of fuel cell is blocking some of the inlet for the radiator in the air. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So. Get more airflow back there. Thanks for being patient with me this week, of course. for real. I just, this is the first time I've ever had to do any of this stuff. And, um, you know, I bugged Keith with a bunch of shit. And then, like I said, I had to cancel on Wednesday and um, tuck my tail, you know, between my legs and just. Growing pains. It is. And, and that's what I said is, you know, if you don't learn from something like that, then you're just going to keep fucking up again. And I just, it, you know, it, it's heavy on me because I, I don't like to have like a fuck up in any way. And I like to, just like I like to build things, I like to have everything work out and do what I say and say what I do and yeah. just, uh, but now I'm, you know what it takes and yeah, exactly. what's involved and yep. what's so important. And, yep. Yeah. And that's, that's all it is. It's just like, you know, calculating time. It's the same with, with fabrication jobs. The more you do, or as long as you do everything once, you kind of have a bearing of what that's going to take time wise and labor wise or material and, and, um, putting these things together is no joke either. It takes time. It, takes it's, time. it is a tedious thing and to do it right and reshank right, all the bolts and time. yeah. That's why it's so important. Yep. And it's just, it, it's important too, because then it's your time being out here and Eric's coming from San Diego and, mm -hmm. and making sure that this thing is right, where it's not going to have some stupid failure from overlooking it mm -hmm. by rushing it or, or missing something. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Well, thanks again, dude. I appreciate it. No problem, man. Bye. See ya. Connor's Tundra back in the shop uh, and now it's got like this really cool brushed wrap on it I guess you could call that like a dark titanium or a charcoal or something <laughs>